Hey, I'm Nick, and I'm going to be making this part on the take. Uh, this is the one I already made, and this is the one I'm going to make now. And I have this fixture plate, and screws are going up from underneath into the stock. Uh, I have it within uh, about a thousandth, maybe half a thousandth. I have this offset in the vise because I ran out of travel. So when you have a little baby mill like this, you have to do stuff like that. Uh, this is the program feed with the 30 inches per minute and a 30 thousandths of an inch step over using a 3 16 end mill and I'm going full depth uh, on the part. The part is 3 eighths of an inch thick. And uh, the first part I ran worked great. So actually I think I can uh, increase the speed quite a bit. So you can see I'm at uh, 30 inches per minute. I'm going to bump that up. I'm going to go to 51 inches per minute. You can hear the motor right about there. The motor loses a tiny bit, but it, it doesn't bog down too much. And here's the motor. So this RPM is uh, double, because I have a two to one on the spindle. So this same 4,500 RPM is spinning at 9,000 RPM. And you can see when the motor strains, it drops slightly, but it recovers pretty quickly. So I think that's fine for a hobby machine like this. It's cutting for the ears now. While that's going, uh, I actually bought a jig plate, Mike 6 jig plate, to do this job. Uh, that way I don't have to touch the, the bottom. Now here I'm only cutting with the tip of the tool, so I'm going to bump up the feed even more. So it's at uh, 50 inches per minute now. Let's see if we can go 70 inches per minute. I've actually never ran a part this fast. Uh, my mill before used to have uh, older stepper motors from the late, from the mid 2000s. It was a Xylotex, and they, I couldn't go more than 30 inches per minute, or they'd skip steps. This one has a Gecko 540, and this mill can go uh, over 100 inches per minute without any problem. And also on the mill, this is the upgraded frame from Stuart Andrews. So that was a really nice addition to this mill. It, it really increases the work envelope. Uh, you can work a lot better. I also just got uh, a few weeks ago this uh, pendant and it's been a big help uh, using it so I'm really happy with this. Uh, this tool path that's running right now is the 3D adaptive roughing tool path on Fusion 360 and I designed the part uh, using on shape CAD. Uh, I really like that CAD system. Uh, this is also the ball screw mill. And that's uh, quite a large improvement over the leaf screw mill.
the far tolerances are much better and the friction is just so low compared to the leaf screw model. Uh, you can see a lot of chips. One day I'll make an enclosure for this, but not right now. I'm going to lower the feed now back to uh, 50 inches per minute. So it's going to do the finish passes now. Uh, now it's going to do the finish passes on the, all the flat surfaces. So it's taking a large step over. So there will be uh, minimum tooling marks compared to when it was doing the adaptive clearance. You can see the difference between the uh, adaptive clearing and the uh, facing operation, the step over amount difference. Now it's doing the top of all the islands and the tops of the screw bosses. That's it for the first roughing. Uh, oh, that's it. Actually, that's all the operations with the 316. <laughs> looks really good now I switched to a 1 16th diameter end mill before I had a 3 16th in and that's to get into uh, the corners of this pocket here and also uh, this radius here I wanted a tighter radius there So this is only cleaning up those sharp, uh, those corners. I want them a little bit sharper. So two corners there and four corners inside here. I didn't want to go aggressive on this at all for fear of breaking the end mill. I didn't know how much these little end mills could take. So I'm only removing about 5,000 of material here and taking three or four passes on each corner just to make sure I don't break it or make a mistake here. Uh, I'm spotting the holes for the 256 thread because the drill that will drill those is going to be very uh, small and could be wobbly. But the holes for the 440 clearance screws, I actually can't spot it with this tool because the full diameter is too big and it'll hit this wall. But that's just a clearance hole, so it's not a precision hole, and uh, I'll be fine. I've been running these high-speed steel drill bits uh, at about 4,000 RPM and at about uh, 5 inches per minute on the feed and I think that's working really well for me. I can probably go faster uh, but it seems this is really comfortable. Uh, this smaller diameter drill for the 256 threads, uh, I'm running the feed at much lower, 2 inches per minute, to not risk breaking it. Now I'm going to tap the holes 256 using a cordless drill. Here are the two parts, and here is the program, or excuse me, here is the CAD. So I'm really happy with the finish on these parts. This is right off the machine. I'm 
I'm sure an industrial machine would do better, but this is pretty good for a hobby machine. The main thing that was important on this part tolerance wise is that the height of these islands to these bosses was 10 thousandths of an inch. And uh, I measured that with a micrometer going from the bottom surface, which is um, the mic six original surface to each of those and it's exactly 10 thousandths different. So that was uh, really good. I'm very pleased about that. Uh, from here to here, the, the width or the depth in the Y direction, uh, it's two thousandths oversize, which is really good. And from here to here, it's actually nine thousandths oversize. So I'm not sure what happened there, and it's it's the same on both parts. Um, so that doesn't make much sense to me. But again, for a hobby machine, that that's fine. Uh, but maybe I'll worry about tracking that down later. So overall, uh, this project was a success and it was fun to do and well within the capability of the K TAG uh, little parts like these. Thanks for watching. See you next time.